Hi there. If you are watching this, it means that you came directly to the cat show episode 11. And that's me, Cat Corral, again here with you. As you know, it all started one morning. Uh, not long ago, like a couple of weeks maybe. Uh, we were hanging out with Randy on Skype and talking scenes and music and everything. And of course, exchanging everything. Uh, I gave him some of my music and of course he gave me some of his. We were talking about lyrics. He told me he's, he's making lyrics too, just like me, but of course in French. And you know, to me that's so interesting right now because I'm learning French. So he sent me an email around 4 a.m. Morning. And I was, and I was so tired and sleepy and everything. I was just going to go to bed. So I, I weren't expecting anything, you know. But uh, then I got the email and a oh, text that was Bourrel. I just started reading and uh, that was not a lot. It was three verses, but. And something like 10 or 15 minutes I found myself thinking and hearing things and imagining things and catching all that that whole French mood, you know. So I guess I recall something something like that old French film of the late 70s La Bagueur with Jean-Paul Belmondo starring there and uh, basically I recalled that marvelous soundtrack by Michel Colombier as far as I remember uh, with that tragic tension and all of that a little heroic a little uh, noble but so so tensed so such a such a great expression, such a great gamut, everything. So I just found myself playing the guitar and the first came came the main riff. It was like that was, I was like, what can you work? Playing stuff like that, it's, it's primitive. Oh my god. that a ride kind of that wasn't a riff that wasn't a key riff that was something like a sensation of the riff some a couple of notes maybe and just a rhythm and uh, I opened my reason and I started writing it and and there it was. It was the right thing, exactly for that. And uh, at the same time, I took my guitar, and we were still talking with Liz Shell on my Facebook and discussing some, some movies, something, something about that lunch. And uh, I caught it. Uh, at the same time, I, I had that whole, whole French mood, but at the same time, I caught, I recall. Just in five minutes, I got the guitar riff for the intro. It was there. 
I just played it with a piano riff and, and that was a perfect match, that was made it happen enough. It just perfectly matched onto each other. And, uh, and then it was 5 a.m., then it was 6 a.m. and 7 a.m. and I just couldn't stop because it was going on and going on and on. And the sun was up, it was morning, it was sunshine, and I was playing my guitar like this. Because I was so sleepy, but I couldn't stop thinking. Um, and basically, I got the, soul, the whole song written in my head around, around 8 a.m. I was just going to bed. I just stopped myself because I'm in bed. Long ago, going to have a good night's sleep, I, I probably won't wake up <laughs> next day. So, but I still couldn't stop. <laughs> for for about another hour, I was just uh, I was just lying, eyes closed. But I hear I heard all of that music in my head, and I wanted to wake up and wake up. You know? <laughs> And uh, I woke up in the afternoon and opened my reason and started writing and writing and writing and I took plenty of coffee and I I just couldn't find myself between between writing and playing my guitar because I wanted to play that the sooner the better. Hi, hi, hi. I'm Alfred Nord. Happy to tell you that this time I am participating on bass guitar in our new French project with Randy Tiger, Al Metis and Kat Carvelli. Now, as uh, Nord is deeply concerned, I am too bad at making drums, uh, especially the, uh, the part about making breaks especially the velocity, because you know I'm using a quite an old method, um, partly habit, partly I don't know why. I'm not I'm not a real specialist at that. Uh, I'm using imported sounds for toms, for bass drum, for snare, for cymbals and everything, all that kind of stuff. And uh, I'm using the inverted velocity, so it's like minus 64, usually. Uh, and, uh, and Norton was like, oh my god, is it even possible at a velocity below zero and it sounds and it plays, really? Because, you know, we were uh, exporting from from Reason to Cubase and, and Norton had that problem. Because uh, he was forced to, to, to correct everything, to try it again. As for the brakes, I think I was just of inspired by uh, by some drummers like Joe Jardison from Slipknot, especially his work from the Iowa album 2003, as far as I remember. And uh, uh, Norton, I did like that. Yeah, oh. yeah certainly. I, I never care. I don't. I don't try to to draw a real drummer. Draw that note after note text there in the rig. And of course that's it's not it's not natural, it's not right, and a real drummer will play that way different. I know that. But finally I'm just making a I'm just making a demo. And I'm just expecting a real drummer uh, to, to hear that, to think about it, to to add something and to perform a far more, far more better uh, drum part in studio or in life. And that's okay. It's really okay. But right now in our case we're just making a demo. So we had the drums made. I guess no one had to correct me. And we tried something due to his cue bass, due to his samples and everything because they were way more different than mine. I can't even recall where did I get that those old samples since 2004 or was that? I just 
on that maybe one day Charlie Jardison plays that for me in a studio or something like that. And uh, I didn't really think that all that drum MIDI editing would take that much time. Um, but Norton was forced to, to crack every knob to, to check out every velocity I was uh, Especially on the snare drum, that was just awful because you know, uh, and the reason I was I was drawing three snares on the on the hardest beat, and I was adding a clank sound that was not a snare actually. Um, but when it came to some some more quiet sound on the, on the verses, for example, I I was drawing one snare, or two different snares with kind of changing the pitch, changing uh, changing the velocity, just a little. But when we, when we converted that, when we brought that to Cubase, that was just awful, and that was terrific. And that was, uh, that was the moment that Norton told me, oh my god, Kat, what are you doing? That's frigging crazy. appreciate Norton as a bass player too because you know we um, we spent something like something like two hours recording the bass guitar and I was I, I was playing I was playing my guitar and I was transcribing uh, showing off that, that guitar riffs and the bass part and what what was meant to be played and uh, Norton just, just played it. That was, that was awesome. We had some issues about the intro, we had some issues about uh, about my drop C tuning that I love that much. Uh, but, uh, but in all that was, that was efficient, that was quick, and that was, that was really great. To guitars, to the guitar record, I was totally, I was totally concerned that I'll be doing that pretty fast and I won't have any problem there. But you know, we had an issue, a major issue too, because uh, this custom fender is not good for drop C tuning. Uh, it's uh, actually it's best in natural tuning, so uh, I took around. 15 minutes to tune it good enough just to, just to fit in with the tuning, the total tuning, and um, play, play that intro and outro played clean enough, you know. Uh, and for a long time we were just looking for sound, looking for for the best sound for us to try and uh, we tried the guitar rig 5, the one that Martin has there. Then uh, I wouldn't find any, any good sound. At least I didn't like any. Probably because I got too much used to one single, one single pedal and uh, playing directly into my PC. And that kind of sound is more, more direct. It's more simple, more, uh, more profound maybe. I don't know. More true, finally. So I. I I really didn't like any of that old session, so um, finally I, I played it over and over again and just deleted the entire session and then I started again and I just played it finally through it through my, through my pedal, one single pedal. Um, that was a ton of job, of course. <coughs> He's a cowboy. The great thing about Ellen is just, you know, 
He's that kind of guy uh, just starting to, starting to narrate some kind of ideas and kind of something that I made. And he just, he just catches up with that. I don't have, I don't have the necessity to, to talk too much. I don't have the necessity to explain that too much. We get that great understanding between us. Salut à tous, c'est moi Alain Mathieu, savez-vous. Vous me savez qu'on monte l'instrumentaliste, mais dans ce projet, j'ai joué du cornu. Um, from the very start, I was just thinking about, thinking about that entire arrangement when I was composing that music, I was... Uh, uh, in, in the first verse, there was that word a chevalier, and uh, they gave me some some impulse, perhaps some uh, some desire to add something noble, some some noble tint to the to the entire composition. So I was just I was just thinking a lot about that, and then I. On one hand, I wanted to make a totally rock song, totally new metal maybe, or a bit sci-fi, but at the same time, on the other hand, I was thinking of some, uh, some wise solution to that. I was looking for some tint, for something that could give me, give me that noble color, what I was chasing for. And, um, that was exactly the moment that I called Alan Matthews, the guy with whom we, we did a lot of stuff in the past, uh, like Lost Secrets from the uh, Reborn Heart album, and uh, Highway Prayer, the bonus track from Take a Jive You Rock, and uh, that was marvelous. Uh, every time we played together, every time we uh, did some kind of some, some kind of record together that was that was so inspiring that was so pure. Un jour, nous prenions du café avec Catherine Corley. On discutait des idées, des projets, des problèmes, comme d'habitude. Mais enfin, tout à coup, elle m'a demandé d'écouter une chanson. Elle a eu une nouvelle chanson, moi en voulu, de mon avis, comme d'habitude. J'ai dit que bon, bien que ce moment-là, Je n'avais pas trop envie d'écouter quelque chose, mais je dis que bon. Je dis que bon parce que, vous savez, c'est pas la première fois que je collabore avec Catherine. Euh, il y avait des projets différents, c'était Supposing, Ribbon Heart, T Minus, Les Pures. Et c'était si chouette que maintenant je ne peux pas lui dire non. Mais alors, euh, je me suis mis à écouter une chanson. Pendant qu'on écoutait, euh, Catherine, euh, Catherine lisait à haute voix euh, des paroles. Il y avait un réforme mélodieux qui, qui m'appelait. C'était pour elle. Da 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 pour elle. Da 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 pour elle. Et voilà comme j'ai connu une chanson pour elle. So I just recall Alan. And I contacted, I contacted him, and I told him that I want something, something like some kind of solo, maybe some kind of theme played there in the middle after the second chorus, something like like the times, like the like the fifties and sixties, um, something like Frank Sinatra, that whole mood, um, jazz big bands and everything. Uh, so I just called down and um, said, okay, I'm on that, I'm in. Et puis Catherine, euh, Catherine m'a demandé de composer une mélodie de refond. Euh, alors j'ai dit que bon, euh, j'ai écouté, j'ai écouté le, euh, le refond. J'ai vu qu'il y a beaucoup de reprises pour elle dans l'âme. 
Blel, blum, blel, blum. Je suis bon, mais il y a beaucoup de reprises. Qu'est-ce que, qu que nous pouvons faire Et puis, et puis je pensais. Et puis j'ai eu une idée. Euh, j'ai compris que je dois, que je dois développer c'est pour elle, c'est parce que c'est pour elle, oui, alors, euh, ça doit être pour elle, 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 pour elle. et voilà, c'était comme ça. Then I just wrote that major, that major part, uh, in the middle, around solo, for a long time I was just considering some, some, some new chords for that place because I wanted to somewhat somewhat shift in this in this spot in order to get out from the minor and go to something something new but at the same time remain like in the same mood in the same atmosphere. So I left the entire rhythm in the guitars in the bass guitar. Uh, but I changed the chords. I changed it to major and I just I just swung to to A major instead of A minor. And that felt great. Vous savez, c'est pas vrai quand on parle de que mélodie se compose de notes. Je suis convaincu euh, que mélodie, que la musique, notre vie, euh, que des chansons se composent d'intervalles. J'ai joué les intervalles. That evening that we're recording the trumpet, uh, or we're going to record the trumpet, I was in town and we met. Uh, we're getting back too late. That was that was around 10 o'clock and we were still around the tube and we still had to to catch a cab and get home and to my place. And then I came here and that was that was around 11 o'clock p.m. And um, I made some coffee and Alan started started rehearsing. Uh, they're in the wardrobe behind me because <laughs> uh, I was too late. But uh, I, I'm afraid we kind of scared all the neighborhood with that sound because. Uh, there was that that knocking on the radiators on central heating and then it was just oh my god we were too late and the point was that uh, Ellen had to part next morning and I hadn't had a lot of time so um, we, we spent that evening just to discuss and talking about things and everything and the next morning we woke we slept for three hours We have to leave. Il était drôle d'enregistrer mon cornet dans un placard. C'est parce que j'avais besoin de son sec. Et voilà pourquoi j'ai décidé d'enregistrer mon cornet dans le placard. Euh, D'abord, Norton essayait d'installer dedans le micro. C'était comme ça. Quand il a fait, on a commencé d'enregistrer. Euh, mais moi, j'ai eu un problème. C'est parce que euh, le micro installé dedans euh, était plus haut que moi. Voilà pourquoi j'ai utilisé cette position pour jouer. <rire> Et voilà, c'était pas grave. Un Norton euh, s'est installé euh, confortablement devant son écran. Euh, elle m'a dit à euh, mon commandement, elle s'est mis à enregistrer. Alors voilà. That was pitifully we were recording the entire trumpet part in, in half an hour. That was weird. That was that was bizarre, really. Uh, and we really didn't care about neighbors, you know. <laughs> It's not a record. 
record studio, it's, it's nothing like that, it's just a balloon in place and usual apartment. But uh, we wanted to do that, and that was a necessity, and so we never cared. That was something around 11 a.m. this time, and Alan was playing, and, and that was okay, and that felt great. Of uh, course, of course, we were totally nervous about about the time limits because we had to go, and that was just a little time. And we're all sleepy and with our morning coffee, and uh, oh, my oh my God, God, there was a deadline. But there was just no way, no other way, and we had to do that. So now it was oh come on, we had to do it. And we we got no time, and. Uh, Finally we did it. That was that was too nervous, that was really killing, but we did it. So now, shall we go and give it a nice long listen? Let's go.
merci, je veux dire mon merci, je veux dire mon merci à Norton, qui était si heureux, qui a enregistré mon cornet, et de basse guitare. Euh, merci bien sûr à Andy Tiger, euh, qui a écrit des paroles magnifiques. Et bien sûr à Catherine Corelli, qui nous a réunis, qui m'a invité à son projet. Et je suis convaincu que ce n'est pas la dernière fois. Euh, nous collaborons ensemble avec Catherine Corelli en projet. Finally, I want to thank Randy Tiger for, uh, for giving me this most inspiring lyrics and also for giving me that astonishing spirit of French chivalry. Uh, I also want to thank Alan Matthews for collaborating with me once again and giving all of his support and attention to this new project and uh, of course for composing his wonderful cornet hearts. That was a cornet that was in the trumpet, you know. And uh, I also want to thank Alfred Norton for putting so much passion in uh, recording his bass guitar for this trick. Did you expect any technical issues real messy beautifully? Je me présente Randy Tiger. Je suis heureux de collaborer sur ma chanson s'intitulant Pour elle avec les compositeurs, arrangeurs Kat Corley, Alain Mafios et Alfred Norton, aussi d'excellents musiciens. Kat a trouvé ce style et nouveaux sons que j'attendais pour cette chanson et je suis très satisfait de ce résultat. J'enregistrerai ma voix en France dans un studio choisi et dirigé par Kat Corelli afin de respecter et garder cette ambiance sonore. Bien évidemment, après cet enregistrement, un clip vidéo sera prévu. Et à ce moment-là, vous découvrirez mon visage. Pour le moment, je préfère rester anonyme. Alors, merci de patienter. Et je vous laisse déjà écouter cette belle musique. Et merci encore à cette équipe formidable. Bye bye.